I love the animated version. It's thrilling to take some of the beloved sequences and make them happen in the real world. Mulan brought a big dose of girl power into our lives in the 1998 Disney animation. But will the live action version live up to the hype? We're spilling the tea on what major changes we can expect. There are differences that we're totally psyched for. Fierce female villain, anyone? But there are also switches that we're pouting over. No Mushu? No Li Shang? Wait, what? Join us as we dissect every little and big difference. Ping. Mulan's love interest, Li Shang, is missing from the live action movie. That's not to say the 2020 version is without a romantic interest, but this time around, the character is called Shen Honghui, played by Yu Son An. And the really important difference is that he's Mulan's equal, not an authority figure. He's Mulan's fellow recruit, and the ambitious soldier sees Mulan as his biggest competition. You're the best warrior amongst us. Producer Jason Reed explained that in the time of the hashtag MeToo movement, having a commanding officer that is also the love interest was very uncomfortable. They didn't think it was appropriate. Mulan and Shen Hongwei don't get off to a great start, with him patronizing Mulan by calling her little. Need a hand, little man? As for the authority figure, he's an entirely separate character. Donnie Yen plays Commander Tung. It seems you've been hiding something. The director says one of her favorite moments was shooting his impressive sword display in front of all the recruits. In the animation, Li Shang had the skills. So you'll die for honor. Mulan cutting off her hair is one of the most iconic scenes of the 1998 movie. But in the 2020 version, Mulan doesn't chop her locks. She takes her father's sword, but uses it for fighting, rather than hairstyling. However, both movies show Mulan wearing her hair up when pretending to be a man in the training camp. And she wears uncomfortable, restrictive clothing to help with her look. So why did they cut that scene? Producer Jason Reed admitted that Mulan cutting her hair is, is actually a Western anachronism. Chinese male warriors wore their hair long, so ironically, Mulan's shorter hair would have made her look like more of a woman. In the trailer, we see lots of scenes of Mulan fighting with her hair down long, after her true identity has been revealed. I knew there was something wrong with you. A woman! It's much longer than Mulan's chopped off hair in the animated movie. This changes once again to make the live action remake more faithful to cultural traditions. My ancestor sent a little lizard to help me. It's not just Li Shang that didn't make the cut in the live action movie. One of the biggest changes from the animated movie is the lack of Mushu. The dragon, voiced by Eddie Murphy, brought most of the comedy moments in the 1998 movie. Now let's see your war face. Oh, I think my bunny slippers just ran for cover. Come on, scare me, girl! But the 2020 version is more serious and more authentic. Producer Jason Reed explained, The dragon is a sign of respect, and it's a sign of strength and power. And using it as a silly sidekick didn't play very well with a traditional Chinese audience. Although the director of the live-action film Nikki Caro dished that Mushu is irreplaceable, eagle-eyed fans have spotted a potential replacement for the protector role that the dragon displays. And it's a phoenix. Mulan's father tells her about how the phoenix sits on the right hand of the emperor. She is his guardian, his protector. And in another trailer, we see a phoenix appear as Mulan's father asks, Ancestors, please protect her. And that's not to say that dragons don't appear at all in the 2020 film either. In the trailer, we do see a dragon, but it's being held up with sticks as part of what looks like a traditional dragon dance. This is much more in keeping with traditional representations of the dragon. Dragon, dragon, not lizard. I don't do that tongue thing. This focus on a more traditional representation of the dragon and other aspects of Chinese heritage is key to this new version. Stay tuned for more on that later. Their leader calls himself Ori Khan. Shan Yu is one of the most terrifying villains in all the Disney animated features, but he's been replaced by a different bad guy in the 2020 remake. This new enemy is Bori Khan, and he looks quite similar to Shan Yu with a few subtle differences. He has heavy lined eyes, but not yellow like the 1998 villain. Bori Khan has long hair, but without Shan Yu's bald patch on top. And Bori has distinctive scars on his face, whereas Shan Yu has expressive eyebrows. Bori's the leader of the Northern Invaders, like Shan Yu. Whereas Shan Yu was only motivated by power, it's personal for Bori. When we take the Imperial City, I will take revenge. For my father!
The director has spoken about how Jason Scott Lee nearly didn't make the cut because he was a little round. But their trainer shredded Jason in two months with just organic food and exercise. And interestingly, it's Bori who gives us a shirtless moment of muscles. That honor was given to Lee Shang in the 1998 animation. We have two new characters, our villains. Rather than just one baddie, we get two in the remake. The second villain is called Xian Lang, played by Gong Li, and she's described as a witch. Her makeup is fierce. It looks like she's a replacement for Sean Yu's falcon. Her nails are like claws, and she can shapeshift into a falcon. Her conversations with Mulan shed light on the view of women in the army. A woman in the man's army. They will show you no mercy. We also lose Mulan's hilarious grandmother in the live-action remake. However, as we've seen, we don't just lose characters, we gain new ones too. And in the 2020 version, Mulan is no longer an only child. She gets a sister, played by Xana Tang. I am blessed with two daughters. We see Mulan and her sister together when the decree arrives, instructing one man from every family to fight. It's clear that Mulan is older, as she's the one who's wearing makeup for the matchmaker. We see Mulan, her sister, and her parents sitting around a table. This replaces the scene in the animation when Mulan and her parents are sitting with her grandmother. We see Mulan with her sister when their mom tells them, We must be strong. This new dynamic adds greater motivation for Mulan to serve in her father's place, as she has a younger sister to protect too. It is my duty to protect my family. This is more in keeping with other, more traditional tellings of the legend, as in some versions, Mulan has a sister and even a little brother. The 1998 movie got an Oscar nomination for Best Original Score, but the 2020 version is stripping out all of the singing in favor of an instrumental score. We get a snippet of the instrumental version of Reflection in one of the trailers. The musical numbers are a big part of Disney animated movies, so why has the live-action remake stripped them out? It's all down to the desire to make it more realistic. As the director points out, we don't tend to break into song when we go to war. She's keen to point out that she thinks the songs are brilliant in the animation. Christina Aguilera has recorded a new single for the film called Loyal, Brave, True. How do you think that the new song stacks up against the originals like Reflection? I'll make a man out of you honor to us all, and a girl worth fighting for. The original ballad of Mulan was written in the 7th century, and it's been told countless times. The cultural background of the original legend is a major driving force of the 2020 movie, and that explains a lot of the differences between this new film and the 1998 animation. As executive producer Bill Kong points out, She represents many great, great, great Chinese values. These include honor, good family, loyalty to the country, and that makes Mulan an icon. It was clear to the actors that tradition was of utmost importance. Jason Scott Lee, who plays Bori Khan, spoke about the importance of authenticity. They're putting every ounce of effort to get things right. That went across every aspect of the movie, and that also played a big part in casting, especially when it came to the actor who got the part of Mulan, Liu Yifei. The director explained, We put her through a grueling physical assessment. She's an accomplished martial artist. Many people believe that Mulan flopped in China because audiences felt it was too Americanized and too removed from the original legend. And that's why this version has so many differences. What do you think of the changes in the live-action movie? We want to know what you think, so be sure to sound off in the comments section. Give this video a big thumbs up if you love Mulan as much as we do. Thanks for watching!